patterns. They've been around since the late 90s and GeoCities pages, of which I actually had one, along with MySpace. Now, how can we use patterns in a modern context? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now, first, we're going to use a really awesome tool for creating patterns, and these are customizable SVG patterns at pattern.monster, which is the actual URL. Look at all these patterns. And you can also click the each one, customize all the colors and different things about them. And then also get a CSS and or SVG print, I, I, not a printout, but code snippet along with I, an actual PNG. And then we can use it in Figma to plan the actual design. So I'm also going to show you how to implement the patterns, which are very simple in the front end HTML CSS world as well. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's freaking get started. Now, wait just one moment. If you're interested in UI design, which perhaps you are if you're watching this video, you should definitely check out my UI design bootcamp at scrimba.com. At scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, no, no. You're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So make sure you click on the very top link here in the YouTube description, and you will get access to my UI design bootcamp along with many other courses for a low monthly fee. Let's get started. All right, so here I am at patternmonster.com. Um, I have Figma ready to rock right here so we can start experimenting with some of these patterns. So. Um, I'm just gonna take a look now. Obviously, there are a lot here. Um, I'm going to just take uh, one of the initial ones that they give you to start off with right here. We could see there's um, a bunch of different options. We can zoom this thing. We can change the horizontal position and vertical position, the stroke width. I kind of like a thicker one, actually. We'll leave it all the way up there. Um, vertical spacing, angle. That's sort of cool. I like that. Um, let's get that at an even 45 we can there we go and then colors we could change the enough the amount of colors here which is actually pretty freaking cool I like four and then depending on how many colors you specify you can change the background which is white here um, we can change and then obviously the other three colors that are found within so before I go and try to customize uh, colors and stuff like that let's just use this right here how could we use this in the context of a modern user interface well, it give you some options down here. Um, you can copy the CSS and the SVG, which would be more helpful when you're in the front end development process. But when you're in the UI design process, when you're working with an apps like Figma and XD, we can download an SVG. Although this here uh, is just, uh, if we click download for the SVG, it doesn't just download this whole thing that you see here. It only downloads the actual repeating portion. Uh, so it's not very helpful in the context of using it in something like Figma either, but we can download a PNG I, just to get us started. So we can take a look at it when we're experimenting with our UI design. So um, I'm gonna open that up in a folder which is on my other desktop so you don't see it. And I'm just gonna drag it in. So right now this is a PNG. This is not what you would tell your front end developer if you're not playing that role yourself. Uh, you wouldn't have them use this PNG. Instead, you would wanna have them use the SVG which is available right here. All right, so how will we use this, like I mentioned, in the context of a modern user interface? So let me just take this and make this darker. I like having a, uh, if it's a light background for a UI, I like having a darker background for the canvas uh, here in Figma and vice versa as well. That way I can really see the actual frame of the layout that I'm working with. So how can we use this? I, well, one immediate thought here is, you know, a knee jerk reaction would just be, make it consume everything. Now in this case, when it has like a white background and we have high contrast varying colors, it's gonna be hard to make this sort of work, uh, especially as a, a full background, because presumably you're gonna have stuff on top of it like text. Now if we put text on top of this as it stands, it's gonna be pretty busy looking. In fact, let me just do that right now. Um, really awesome wavy lines, all right. So if I make that, uh, we're gonna use pop-ins, which is a great uh, sans serif font. We'll make it black uh, so that it, it really fills up as much space as possible um, in terms of the weight. And then we'll also make it black as well so we can really increase uh, the contrast. And then maybe we'll shoot it up to something really big like uh, 96 points here. So if I center this, all right. You could still read really awesome wavy lines, but it's still just, it's too cluttered. 
So we have to take a different approach in the context of this type of uh, repeating background or pattern uh, just because it's so busy itself. So what we could do is, you know, your patterns don't have to fully uh, consume the entire layout. They can be just small portions of a layout, like a column or something. So we could do something like this, where we take and we left align this perhaps. Um, let's adjust the lighting here, get that up a little bit. Um, maybe we'll take this angle it down. Now I'm just going to quickly build out a little bit of a user interface so we can get uh, context here. So we'll take uh, changes to like, no, we'll leave that at like 24, change this to regular, and then hit auto on the letting, and then just to save ourselves some time, we'll lorm ipsum this and then generate, okay. So in the context of you know this type of example, this here works completely fine. Uh, this would even be fine without it being black. Bold, that would work as well. I, what you wouldn't wanna do is something like this. As you can see, this thin, small text gets way too lost in this design right here. Um, it's just too much happening. Now, of course, what you could do as well, I, you know, this is one example that works, and this works because the 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 type that's on top of it is really large and it's very bold. So you can ha you have no problem essentially reading this. Now, we could also, if I duplicate this, we could do we could use patterns in this way. Uh, nothing has to be on top of them. I uh, you can kind of align things up uh, and have fun with the alignment. We could do this maybe, and then pull this over and then push it on the other side. Uh, we could, what else could we do? We could, we could do this, a single column, and maybe move this over. Uh, you could go the opposite route, where instead of doing a column, we could just do a row. So as you can see, I'm just kind of quickly iterating just to create different use cases for these patterns. So as you can see, you can use this in a million different ways. Let's uh, let's get a different pattern up here, and I will attempt to customize the colors just so we can create uh, another look. Like let's try to create a pattern that can be used, uh, like as a full background with text on top of it. So how will we do that? Let's go dark this time. So we're gonna take the white background, and we're gonna go and I'm gonna choose like a color right around here, kind of like a purplish. And I'm gonna copy this value. So if we change the hex, we can copy this value. Now, uh, for the purple, I actually kinda of like that purple. It's already there. Um, but I will just copy and paste this hex value. So we can add tint, which is adding lightness, um, like this. Or we can add uh, shade, which is adding darkness. Now, remind, remember, we're, we're staying in the same exact hue. We're not moving this hue slider right here. Or we could add tone, which is adding more gray to it. So for me, I think I'll add a little bit more lightness and let me get back to the original. And I'm just gonna drag it straight up. Maybe right around there. So I don't want much contrast because my anticipation with this is to have foreground elements on top of the pattern. Um, next up, I will get to the next one right here. Now this is, a, this is a real high contrast sort of red. So I'm just gonna paste in that hex value and we're gonna come up maybe a little bit higher than the previous one. So it's a little bit lighter or more tint rather. And then the blue, we'll do the same thing. And maybe I'll make this real light like that or not much contrast rather. So this here, in my opinion, yeah, this works. So now we can download the PNG and that has been downloaded. And let me open up that all right and I'll duplicate this let's delete this one and I'll drag that pattern in all right so let's put this all the way to the bottom now obviously because we went dark with this 
any foreground elements should be lighter. So let's just use absolute white. And look at that. I mean, this looks really, really cool. Now, just temporarily, I changed the background to something lighter. Now we can really see this uh, in its full effect. And this is just, I love it. It's, a, it's, it's very subtle. It's like a watermark because the colors that comprise of this pattern are all very you know, low contrast in relation to each other in the background in which it sits on. Uh, and that way it gives us the ability to create a high contrast foreground elements like this, like this white, and it, it really works well, I love it. All right, so let's say for instance, we wanna see what this looks like in the front end development portion, like realizing this in a browser. I haven't tested any of these I, with, the, with HTML and CSS yet and the code that this you know pattern monster outputs. So let's see uh, if we can get this right here working uh, on an actual website. So uh, what I'm, I assume I'm gonna do, it, it gives you two options. You can copy CSS and try it out uh, and or the SVG. So let me just, let's do the CSS. I'm gonna copy that. I'm not sure what the results or the differences will be like, um, but I have right here a um, empty index.html, well, almost empty, it has all the boilerplate stuff with a main.css here. So let's just target the body element, might as well. So um, we'll come over here, body, we'll do background. Oh wait, it said it gave us the CSS already, so. Ooh, okay, so this isn't, oh, okay, background image, okay. Let's delete this, because I wasn't sure if it gave you a selector. And let's just save this. Uh, I'm gonna right click, open with live server. <laughs> what is happening here? All right, I figured out uh, the issue. I need to put um, a height of 100 viewport height here on this body element. Um, so you wanna make sure that that, that is set up. Other, there you go, now it's all fixed and it's working as expected. Um, so you don't only have to put it on a body element, uh, you could put it on any other element. So for instance, um, let's grab this color right here. Uh, we'll make that the background color of our body. So what we'll do is change this, let's get rid of this. We'll do background, that color. So now if we save it, it's gonna be this solid background color. Um, and then we'll have an element here in the middle uh, of our body tags and we're gonna say, uh, let's just do section. Um, and then we'll have like, well, we'll leave it like that. It's just a section right there. Um, and then we'll have, did I put div class section? I'm silly, section, there we go. So now we'll use section and we'll specify this. We'll copy the uh, CSS again right here. So copy the CSS and we're gonna give this a, an explicit width in height. Um, so for the width, we'll say oh, maybe 33%, so one third of the browser. Um, and this didn't have a semicolon at the end. Um, and then we'll also give it a height of like 3M units or maybe 10M units. Let's save and see what happens. Oh, okay, so for the height actually, Let's do 100 viewport height. And there we go. So we now have that same sort of aesthetic. So if we wanted to H1 on top of it, for instance, um, well, we can do content, we can make it position um, absolute, and then we can have H1 um, of a bunch of wavy lines, and then you can have other stuff. We'll just do this single uh, example here. Um, the content will be position absolute, top uh, 3M, left 3M, something like that. Um, and then our H1 element, uh, let's say color white, font family, pop-ins, which I already have installed so I don't have to import it right there. Um, and font size, six RAM. I have no clue what this is gonna look like, uh, but I'm just, there you go. So now, um, I'll say left more like 10 M units and there we go. So we just kind of created that, you know, the, the, the breaking out of the box situation like we had in Figma. And that's exactly how you can use uh, that awesome resource really to just, just browse and integrate many awesome 
useful patterns as you can see here. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe, leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you all very soon. Goodbye.